Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Today's video is going to be the seventh video in my anti-aging skincare ingredients series in which I take a look at ingredients that have anti-aging claims to see if they really work and if they're worth it to spend our time and our money on and to incorporate into our skincare routine. So today's video is going to be all about the anti-aging oils. And as we know, oils are having a moment because not only are they one of the more natural anti-aging ingredients that you can get for your skincare routine, they're also considered clean. And that's having a moment now as well. People are always looking for things that are a little bit closer to nature. And so oils that are derived from plants or other natural resources uh, certainly fit that bill. As with most anti-aging ingredients, the claims can be a little exaggerated and so I've looked into the research to figure out if the claims are true and if they're worthwhile to use in our skincare. Now being a person who has a combination skin type, I have an oily t-zone uh, and I have been acne prone in the past. I have never been a huge fan of using separate oils in my skincare but I know a lot of people who use oils who have drier skin and they swear by them and I have used them in the past when my skin was a little dry like in the dead of winter to add a little more hydration to my skin. So I think that they can work from the hydrating standpoint, but lately I have seen so many headlines and so many videos about the must-have oils, what they can do for different skin types and for anti-aging, that I was hoping that by digging into the research I would become a convert and be a lover of anti-aging oil. So I'm always hopeful when I enter these things. I did a really deep dive on this one. I did so much research that I ended up writing a 15 page script for this video. I hope to not bore you. I always like to preface these by saying that I'm not a doctor, I'm not a chemist, I am not an expert in any of this stuff, but I do like to do some research and when I get into it, boy do I get into it. I also have a few people in my life that help me a little bit who can access the full text of the papers. My daughter who's in pre-med uh, in college and is doing a lot of chemistry. She wants to be a dermatologist and a lot of skin stuff. And my father, who is a chemist and has had a long career in personal care. I just want you to know that I'm coming at this from as sciencey a standpoint as I possibly can. I might not be right about everything. This is, in the end, an opinion-based piece, so take it for you know what it is. So there are three kinds of oils used in skincare. They are fixed plant oils, essential or volatile plant oils, and also mineral oils. So the top one, the fixed plant oils, those are oils like olive, sunflower, safflower, coconut, sesame, almond, avocado, jojoba, argan, rosehip seed, cut kay, shea butter, hemp, and they're mainly used as moisturizers in skincare. Then there are the essential and citrus and volatile oils, and some of those are bergamot, orange peel, lavender, rosemary, and rose petal oils. Those are mainly used for fragrance and feel properties in skincare and cosmetics, but some of them can be irritating. Personally, I can't use like lavender oil or rosemary oils. For the citrus oils, there's a lot of information out there about how those can create a phototoxic reaction when exposed to sunlight, uh, but a lot of those oils are steam distilled and that removes the bergaptin in them which is what causes the phototoxic reaction so some of that is overblown but um, I'm not really going to be talking about the volatile oils here today. And then the third type is the mineral oils, which are derived from petroleum. Those are petrolatum and mineral oil. Of course, cosmetic grade oil has been refined so that there aren't any harmful compounds in it. They are perfectly safe to use. They've been used for hundreds and hundreds of years and they have a really good safety profile. Oils can be found in just about everything concerning skincare. They're in creams, they're in lotions, they're in serums, they're in makeup, they're in cleansers. They're also sold separately as just straight oils. So today's video is mainly going to be on the fixed plant oils and the general thinking and what you'll read in most articles about them is that they are full of fatty acids that closely resemble the fatty acids in our own skin and so our skin recognizes them and knows what to do with them and puts them right to work and that they're easily absorbed. You'll also read that they are rich sources of vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin D, and that they also contain other antioxidants and carotenoids and therefore are anti-aging. 
So I wanted to dissect those different claims to make it easier on us. So let's start with the first one, and that is, are plant oils moisturizing? And the answer is yes, because some plant oils are occlusive, and so they help to moisturize the skin by trapping water onto the skin and eliminating some of the transepidermal water loss, or tool that can occur. The more occlusive plant oils are sweet almond oil, avocado, olive, sesame, and squalane. Now there was one small study that compared tool using no oil compared to mineral oil and sesame oil. And with no oil applied to the skin, just, you know, regular evaporation, skin lost about 400 micrograms of water per hour. And applying mineral oil, which is an occlusive oil, uh, skin loss only about 80 to 100 micrograms of water per hour. So that was a 75% reduction in water evaporating from the skin. Then with sesame oil, skin lost about 250 to 300 micrograms of water per hour. So while it did hold about 25% more water onto the skin than without oil, it wasn't as big of a result as you got with mineral oil. Mineral oil is probably more effective, but if you don't want to use mineral oil, then definitely, yes, the occlusive oils can help to hold more water onto the surface of the skin. Then um, some of the other oils are just emollient. They're not as occlusive. And what they do is they just soften the edges of the dry skin and make it look nicer and lay down flatter. All right, question two. Do plant oils contain lipids like triglycerides and free fatty acids and so our skin recognizes them and knows what to do with them and puts them right to work and that they're easily absorbed? All right, so the answer is technically yes, but it's a little more complicated than that. There are triglycerides, lipids, and free fatty acids in oils and in our skin. But if we break down what is in what, that's where it gets a little murky. So the stratum corneum, which is the outermost layer of our skin, it's composed of about 33% free fatty acids. The most important lipids for skin health are omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. These are called essential fatty acids because our body doesn't produce them on our own. We have to get them from other sources. There are only two essential fatty acids. They're both polyunsaturated acids. One is alpha-linolenic acid, that's the omega-3, and one is linoleic acid, that is the omega-6. So in plant oils, 98% of just about every oil is going to be triglycerides, and there is a very small amount of free fatty acids, usually under two or three percent. Oils are mainly made up of triglycerides rather than free fatty acids. And triglycerides are esters formed from glycerol plus three, three, plus, this is a tongue twister, plus three free fatty acids. When they're contained in a triglyceride, our skin doesn't recognize them as free fatty acids. Technically, there aren't a lot of actual free fatty acids floating around in the oil that your skin is gonna recognize and absorb and put to work. Now, when I was doing the research for this, I kept seeing all these charts that were saying all these oils were like 75% linoleic acid and 25% oleic acid and 10% palmitic acid. And I was like, wait a minute, if it's only two to 3%, how is it 75%? And what I found out is that in order to get those charts, what the companies do is they separate the free fatty acids out from the triglycerides. This is done through a process involving adding other chemicals, heating it up, shaking it around, cooling it down, adding gas, on and on and on. It's like a 20 step process. They finally figure out what the free fatty acids are that are bound up in the triglycerides. But the point is when you put it on your skin, it doesn't like go boing. All the triglycerides immediately turn into free fatty acids. There are a tiny trace of free fatty acids in there, but it's not to the degree that you're led to believe that they are. So I did find some actual studies on putting oils on the skin to see how far they penetrate. And as it turns out, they don't really penetrate that deeply into the skin. Most of the oils that they studied stayed in the top zero to 20 percent of the stratum corneum. So that's like saying in the topmost layer of the topmost layer. Our skin also produces sebum, that's our natural oils. Those contain about 45 percent triglycerides, some of which are converted to free fatty acids by bacteria in our pores. I know how much more complicated can it get? resulting in about 
10% free fatty acids in sebum that is coating the surface of your skin. In a study on human skin, the triglycerides in almond, jojoba, and avocado oils stayed at the surface of the stratum corneum where they had a hydrating effect due to their occlusive qualities. A couple of studies found that oils higher in oleic acid tend to penetrate a little bit deeper into the skin and are disruptive to the skin barrier. They also can bring other elements in the oil deeper into the skin and that oils that are higher in linoleic acid tend to stay at the surface of the skin and be more hydrating. All right, as if that part wasn't complicated enough, let's get into the third part, which is do plant oils contain vitamins and antioxidants like vitamin A in different forms, vitamin C and vitamin E that are some of the most potent anti-aging ingredients that we use and so therefore plant oils are anti-aging? Well, the answer on this one is also technically true. Rose hip seed oil from certain rose plants does contain tretinoin, carotenoids, and phenolic compounds. Grape seed oil does contain resveratrol, vitamin E, and phenols, phenols, phenols. Argan oil does contain polyphenols, vitamin E, and squalene. Avocado oil does contain carotene, minerals, vitamins A, D, and E, and cacao oil does contain retinol, vitamin E, and vitamin F. So what could be wrong with that? Well, the big question is how much is actually in there and is it enough to do anything in your skin? It was really hard to track down this information because usually what they'll say is oil X has twice as much vitamin A as oil Y or oil Z has four times as much antioxidants as oil Q and that all sounds super fantastic. All right, so let's take a look at a specific example. I'm gonna compare cacao oil to rosehip oil because those are the ones that both claim to have some form of vitamin A. Now, it took a bit of digging to find actual numbers and actual types of vitamin A that are in each, but I did manage to find that cacao oil contains retinal palmitate and that some species of rosehip seed oil do contain transretinoic acid, which is Retin-A, the prescription stuff. So right off the top, comparing them apples to apples, the retinoids in them are not the same. The cacao oil contains a ester of vitamin A that has to do a three-step conversion in your skin before it becomes retinoic acid, which is what the rosehip seed oil already has in it. So I know already you're getting excited. You're like, what? Rosehip seed oil has Retin-A in it? Yeah, it actually does. But wait, not so fast. Let's take a look at the numbers. Cacao oil contains 1.142 international units per 100 milliliters of retinal palmitate. Rosehip seed oil contains 0.357 milliliters per liter. So when you do the math to convert IUs into grams and then grams into liters and then milliliters into liters, what they both calculate out to is the amount of retinal palmitate in cacao oil is approximately 0.000003%. And the amount of tretinoin in rosehip seed oil is 0.000357%. So as you can see, very, very tiny amounts, otherwise known as virtually none. So while there's definitely a better dose of a better type of vitamin A in rosehip seed oil versus cacao oil, both of them don't have enough to actually do anything in your skin because the real research, of which there is a ton on tretinoin, shows that in concentrations below 0.01%, it doesn't do anything to your skin, and these both are way below that. So unfortunately, those are just really great marketing claims, and I have to apologize to the nice cacao oil man who emailed me, asked me if I wanted to do a sponsored video for them. Uh, they offered me $6,000, which I turned down graciously, but I did say that I would try his product, so I do have that as a PR sample, and I did try it, and as far as oil goes, it's a fine oil, so sorry, Mr. Cacao Man, and also rosehip seed oil, which is the one that I was personally the most excited about, because when I saw that it contained tretinoin, I was like, yeehaw, there is something to this, and then my bubble was completely burst 
All right, so let's move on to vitamin C. Maybe they have enough vitamin C to make it worth your while, right? As we know that vitamin C in skincare, the most effective version is L ascorbic acid, and the effective range is between 10 and 20%. So rosehip seed oil actually doesn't contain any ascorbic acid, even though we're constantly told that it is a good source of vitamin C. That's because the rosehip seeds are actually a good source of vitamin C, but once it's pressed to release the oil, there is no ascorbic acid in the oil. Let's take a look at the vitamin E in argan oil. It contains between 600 and 900 milligrams per kilogram of total tocopherols, which equals 0.0009%. Let's look at the resveratrol in grapeseed oil. The trans resveratrol, um, 0.3 milligrams per kilograms, have been detected, that comes out to 0.00003%. Total phenolic compounds, including flavonoids, carotenoids, and phenolic acids in grapeseed oil, 0.00029%. What all this means, what it all boils down to, is that plant oils are good at moisturizing by being occlusive, but they are not adding any special anti-aging skincare ingredients to your skin. I mean, moisturizing isn't nothing. Moisturizing is really good for your skin. And so if you can use a plant oil on your face and it will add that extra level of occlusiveness or it will help your skin to look smoother, then I'm all for that. I'm just not all for all the hype and all the less than truthful marketing around it. So if you were looking for an oil to use in your skincare, I always have product recommendations for you. I personally am not gonna add in a separate like cold pressed rosehip seed oil to my skincare routine because, you know, as I said earlier, oily skin, don't really like the oils, and I have a hard time using them. I find that if I put them on after my other treatment things, then the treatment things tend to ball and pill up, and I'm like, ooh, did that just ruin my retin -A. So in my skincare routine, I do have a few oils. I do use a few oils. Uh, there is almond oil in my Curology. You guys know that I love the Curology. This is prescription tretinoin. So if you're looking to improve your fine lines and wrinkles using a vitamin A, I recommend a prescription retinoid. I think that they are the hardest working, the number one anti-aging thing that we can use. Uh, Retin-A can cause your skin to be a little bit drier, and so the almond oil does help my skin to be less dry using the Retin-A. If you want to try the Curology, it's like a mail service where they mail it to you once a month. The first month is free, um, and I have a link in the information box below the video where you can try Curology. But, you know, comparing something like Curology, which has prescription tretinoin in it, in, a, in an actual high enough dose that it's going to make a difference in my skin and has made a difference in my skin, compared to something like this um, certified organic rosehip oil. While this might be a nice moisturizer to add at the end, I wouldn't buy it in hopes that it had enough tretinoin to really help with my big uh, wrinkles, you know? I do use an oil cleanse for my first cleanse and I find that that really breaks up the makeup and especially my sunscreen which can be very tenacious. The products that I use that are oil-based cleansers are the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. This one has safflower oil in it and I also really like the DHC Deep Cleansing Oil. This is an olive oil based cleanser. So if you're looking for an oil for using on your skin for moisturization, for me, there's not a huge difference between them. It's really more a look and feel kind of thing. I think they all deliver the same stuff, meaning they don't really deliver on the vitamin E, the vitamin C, the vitamin A, all that other great stuff that they claim. It's really more about how well they're gonna hold the moisture onto your skin. So from that standpoint, the heavier, the greasier oils are gonna hold in the moisture better. They're gonna be more occlusive. The more occlusive plant oils are sweet almond oil, avocado, olive, sesame, and squalane. Your skin does produce less sebum as you get older. So if you're an older person who used to have oilier skin and now it's becoming more and more dry, then probably the oil I would recommend would be the squalane oil because it most closely matches what was in our sebum. And as that slows down, this can help to replenish some of that. So this is a nice one. This is from Timeless. They sent me this in PR. It's really lightweight and 
you know, it's clear and it doesn't smell like anything and it absorbs right in. It does leave a little bit of like a little bit of an oily occlusive barrier, but it's not nearly as oily as some of the other oils that really are quite oily. So that's a nice one. I think my discount code will work on the oils. It's HF5 off. You get $5 off your order. There's a product that I just got in PR that I was really pretty psyched about, especially after doing all the research from this, and it's an oil-based lotion from Paula's Choice, a brand new product. Just got it in. I've used it two nights so far, and what I like about this is that it's oil-based and it's got a mixture of a lot of different oils in it plus squalane. It also has the three ceramides that I always look for in something, but what she threw in there that we just learned about in this video is the actual free fatty acids, linoleic and linolenic acid and oleic acid. They're already in there, ready for your skin to use. So you can just put them on and they are usable. So that's great. So I think this was a really interesting product with a really great ingredient list. I think that it is really great for moisturizing and hydrating dehydrated skin. These are cold pressed pure oils. They're relatively inexpensive. This one one is a jojoba oil from Oracacia. I think this was like 12 or $16 at the grocery store. It's cold pressed, it's all organic, it's four ounces, it's really big. If you were using a skincare oil and loving it, then that's great. I certainly don't want to rain on anyone's parade. Anyway, that is it for today's video. I think I probably went on for about five hours. So if you enjoyed our nerdy adventure into chemistry land to um, find out the deep dark truth behind plant oils and what they really can or can't do for your skin then go ahead and give the video a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell as always i thank you so much for your time i really do appreciate your watching especially a long one like this and i will see you in the next video take care everybody Bye bye